Brothers and sisters in Christ, peace be with you. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. As we continue celebrating this great season of the rising of Jesus from the dead, our gospel reading brings us back to that event of the Last Supper. And probably many of us will be asking the question, why go back to the story that was before the death and the resurrection of the Lord? It simply means that this resurrection of the Lord is always seen and encountered every time we celebrate the Eucharist. In other words, the meaning of the resurrection becomes fully understood if we go back to the teachings of Jesus in the Eucharist. More so, the Eucharist allows us to encounter Jesus who is alive, the one who is victorious over death and over sin. Our Gospel speaks of how Jesus narrated and told his disciples that at that moment, he was to glorify God, and God will also glorify Him at once. You see, in the language of St. John, glorification and crucifixion, they mean one thing. Because to be glorified is to embrace the cross, the cross which is the source, which is the very reason of His life and of His mission. That is why glorification would mean the capacity of Jesus Christ to offer Himself so that He may give life to those who believe. In the Gospel of John, Jesus was never a victim of this crucifixion. No one takes my life. I freely lay it down. And precisely in this freedom to accept the mission of the Father, he has shown His great love for the Father and for humanity. That is the basic consideration here. And that's why Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. This love that He has given us as a new commandment is always patterned after this self-sacrifice that He has shown us on the cross. We cannot love one another as the world teaches us how to love. We Christians are supposed to love as Christ loved us. That is to say, love that is measured by our commitment to give life to others. Often we speak of love as emotion. Often we speak of love as feelings. But love is more than this. Love is a commitment out of gratitude. We are grateful because the Lord has given His life for each one of us. And our way of thanking Him is to echo, to reflect this love in our care for one another. That is why our love and our care for the others, it becomes prophetic when it is patterned after the love of Jesus Christ. I always tell people, you know, the NGOs, they help a lot of people, amount-wise, perhaps greater than we individual Christians would normally offer. But the difference is not in the amount. The difference is this, that we love not because we are good. We love because God has been good to us. God has given us life, and God has given us His mercy. And we love Him in others so that we can be expressive of our thanksgiving, of our gratitude to Him. Love one another as I have loved you. 
brothers and sisters in Christ, every time we celebrate the Eucharist, we are reminded of this call and of this mission. When Jesus is broken in every breaking of the bread that we do, Jesus reminds us we too must be willing to be broken as an act of gratitude, an act of glory, an act of love. We cannot receive Him in the Eucharist without desiring to be likened to His life because that would be an insult to the Lord who has loved us before we have learned how to love Him. This is my new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. I would say, if we do not understand how much the Lord loves us, neither can we truly love our brothers and sisters. The Eucharist allows us to see that. That in our betrayal, on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus did not take revenge. He gave up himself, thanking the Father, giving his very self to those who betrayed him. Take this, my body. Take this, my blood, so that you may be forgiven of your sins. My new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Let us learn the love of the Lord, or better yet, let us appreciate how the Lord has loved us, how He has forgiven us long before we have learned how to forgive one another. The initiative, the first step, is always coming from the Lord. He has shown us the path, and now He asks us to take the same path so that the world may truly believe that we are His disciples. Let us unite ourselves in prayer, always praying for one another in the Eucharist. Pray for us, your priests. And this is Father Ulrich of the Rogationist Fathers, wishing you the peace of the risen Christ.